During the Middle Ages, before the rise of modern science, people had no scientific evidence for the beginning of the universe. But Ghazali presented some ingenious philosophical arguments for why the past has to be finite. For example, Ghazali points out that if the universe never began to exist, then the number of past events in the history of the universe is infinite. Think about it. If the universe never began to exist, then the number of past events is infinite. But, Al-Ghazali argued, this is impossible because an actually infinite number of things cannot exist. The way in which Ghazali shows the impossibility of an actually infinite number of things is by imagining what it would be like if such a collection could exist and then drawing out the absurd consequences from it. Let me share with you one of my favorite illustrations called Hilbert's Hotel, which is the brainchild of the great German mathematician David Hilbert. Now as a warm-up, Hilbert first invites us to imagine an ordinary hotel with a finite number of rooms. And let's suppose that all the rooms are full. If a new guest shows up at the front desk asking for a room, the manager apologizes, sorry, all the rooms are full, and the guest has to be turned away. But now, Hilbert said, let's imagine a hotel with an infinite number of rooms. And let's suppose, once again, that all the rooms are full. Now this fact has to be clearly appreciated. There is not a single vacancy throughout the entire infinite hotel. Every room already has a guest in it, okay? Now, stay with me here. Suppose a new guest shows up at the front desk asking for a room. What will the manager say? No problem, he says. And he moves the guest who was staying in room one into room two. He moves the guest who was in room two into room three. He moves the guest who was in room three into room four and so on out to infinity so that everybody moves into the room number next highest to his own. As a result, room number one now becomes vacant and the new guest is easily accommodated. And yet, before he arrived, all the rooms were already full. Now, if that seems weird, hang on to your hat because it gets even worse. Let's suppose, Hilbert says, that an infinity of new guests shows up at the front desk asking for rooms. No problem, no problem, says the manager. And he moves the guest who was staying in room one into room two. He moves the guest who was in room two into room four. He moves the guest who was in room three into room six putting each guest into the room number twice his own. One into two, two into four, three into six, four into eight, and so on, out to infinity. Now, think about that. Since any number multiplied by two is always an even number, all of the guests wind up in the even-numbered rooms, two, four, six, eight, ten, and so forth. As a result, all of the odd-numbered rooms become vacant and the infinity of new guests gratefully checks in. And yet, before they arrived, all the rooms were already full. In fact, the proprietor could do this an infinite number of times and always be able to accommodate more guests. As one student remarked to me after class, Hilbert's hotel, if it could exist, would have to have a sign posted outside no vacancy, guests welcome. <laughs> Hilbert's hotel is absurd. Mind you, it's logically correct for the mathematician, but it's impossible for something like Hilbert's hotel to really exist. You can describe it on paper, but it cannot exist in reality. Illustrations like these show that the existence of an actually infinite number of things is impossible. Now, 
Sometimes people react to Hilbert's hotel by saying that these paradoxes result because we can't understand the infinite, and it's, it's just beyond us. But this reaction is in fact mistaken and naive. Infinite set theory is a highly developed and well understood branch of modern mathematics. These absurdities result not because we do not understand the infinite, but because we do understand the nature of the actual infinite. Hilbert was a smart guy and he knew well how to illustrate the bizarre consequences of an actually infinite number of things. Now, what are the implications of all this? Well, if you can't have an actually infinite number of things, then you can't have an actually infinite number of past events. That means that the number of past events in the history of the universe must be finite. But in that case, the past is finite and therefore the universe began to exist, just as Al-Ghazali claimed. So I think that Al-Ghazali's argument is a good one. I think that it shows that the number of past events must be finite and that therefore the universe must have had a beginning.